All right, so I've been working as a full-time engineer for just over a year now, and over that time, I've gotten a lot of questions about how to interview for an engineering role. Yeah, I somehow tricked everyone into thinking I know what I'm doing. But after four internships and a full-time role, I've noticed that some things work better than others. So whether or not my competence is an illusion, in this video, I'm going to give you five basic engineering interview tips. And before we get started, make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So thanks if you do that. Number Number one, study. In school, you never know exactly what they're going to ask you on a test, but you still have a general idea of what they'll ask about. A job interview is the same way. You can't ever know exactly what they'll ask, but you can get a general idea of what they'll ask. The way you do that is by reading the job description. It's the only information available that the company themselves has provided about the job that you are applying for. So make sure you're familiar with it. I guess staying with the school analogy, this is the equivalent of reading the instructions on the top of your test before you do the test. This will also help you narrow down what material you will need to review beforehand. Like in school, you don't study the course's entire material before every test. You just study what that specific test is going to cover. A job interview is a specific test. So just freshen up on the things you'll need to know for that specific test. This will help you study for the job you applied for. For example, if it's programming, well, then you better polish up on your programming skills, which you probably already have, you elite code fanatic. <laughs> yeah, you guys love that place. I think some of you probably even have it as your homepage. Sicko. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. If you have friends that have jobs that are similar to the one you're applying for, ask them what the role is like. Then, based on their response, think of relevant projects you've done in the past or relevant skills you have that would be good for the job at hand. Consulting with friends in the industry is an invaluable asset in the interview process. It's like asking a friend that already took a class, well, what was the test like when you took it? And what do they expect you to know? And just like any other test, study multiple times, not just one time the night before the test. <laughs> I know it's gonna feel dumb studying stuff you already know, but trust me, it's good to be fresh on things. It's a classic saying, right? Use it or lose it. I do, however, use that saying a little too loosely. When it comes to coupons, I have bought a lot of large one topping pizzas that I don't need. It just feels like a waste if I don't buy them, you know? So yeah, it's gonna feel silly. But remember, you're gonna be nervous or excited in the interview, so you just wanna make sure that information is front of mind. Not to be the engineer here, but it's like you're taking data from your storage and putting it in your memory for easy access. Engineers, am I right? <laughs> Number two, think out loud. This is gonna sound weird, but when an interviewer asks you a question, they do not care about the answer. They just want to see how your brain works. For example, I've had multiple people tell me that they've been asking in interviews this question. How would you find how many bikes are in New York? What, what do you think? Huh? What do you think the answer is? I know the answer. The answer is check with the transportation department. But if you say that in an interview, the interviewer will just say, oh, it's closed that day. Now what are you going to do? Because as hard as this may be to believe, the interviewer doesn't actually care how many bikes are in New York. Plus, even if they did, why would you think that they would be asking you? I mean, you guys just met. Checking with the transportation department. That's the right answer, right? Now, this doesn't mean you can't say the right answer. You just have to show how you got there. So if the interviewer were to ask you, how would you go about finding out how many bikes are in New York? You can say, eventually, that I would check with the transportation department, but you would have to show them how you got there. And even then, the interviewer will probably be like, okay, but yeah, they're closed that day. Thank you for the well thought out answer, but no. <laughs> no matter what you say, there will always be a condition that they bring up. This is just another way to see how your brain works and how you deal with struggle when the answer isn't just straightforward. So for every question the interviewer asks you, talk it out. Talk about what you're thinking. What's going on up there? I know you've always done it up there all your life, but now say it out loud. Let people into your process. And if you have a generous interviewer, they may even see you getting a little close and give you some hints. But if you say nothing, how are they supposed to help you? This translates directly into the real world, in fact. In the real world, you have to offer some ideas of your own if you expect to receive help from others. No one's just gonna do your job for you. Yeah, even when you get the role, you're not gonna know how to do everything. It's inevitable that you're gonna need help. And so when you do need help, it's the expectation that you present everything you've done so far. This will prevent wasting time and just retracing steps that you've already taken. It's easier to ask someone for assistance of a task rather than complete ownership of a task. Plus, just like at a human level, it's hard to agree to help someone that hasn't put in any work, you know? So 
another classic saying, help me help you. Put in a little bit of work and then I'll help you, you know? <laughs> and going along with the talking things out point, ask questions if you need to. Like for the bike question, ask what year it is, you know? I don't know if that's helpful, but <laughs> it shows, you know, that's something you're thinking about. What if it's a year before the bike was even invented? See? Answer zero. Checkmate. <laughs> Number three, have your resume with you and review it beforehand. Now, obviously you know yourself, right? But make sure you know the parts of yourself that you have presented to the interviewer because your resume is all the information they have about you. They're not gonna bring up that embarrassing time that you dropped all your groceries in public because they don't know that about you. Unless for some reason you put that on your resume, which I wouldn't in case you were considering it. But all the person sitting across from you knows about you is on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So make sure your interviewer and you are talking about the same person. <laughs> if you have an achievement on there, be ready to talk about it because they could be like, oh, this award from 2016, tell me about it. And then you don't want to be the guy that's like, hmm. oh yeah, 2016. Shit, I forgot about that award. Also, depending on the job you apply for, your resume should look different. Yeah, that's another piece of advice. If you don't already do it, tailor your resumes to the job you are applying for. Having one universal resume is not optimal. If you're applying to be a programmer, highlight the programming project you did, not the circuit you made. I mean, still bring that up, but you know, emphasize and highlight the programming project. If the interview is in person, then print out two copies of your resume. They probably already have one, but just bring two. This shows preparedness and proactiveness. Two stellar qualities for a potential employee. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> also shows you have access to a printer. Yeah, life hack for anyone that wants to make friends in a college dorm, be the guy with a printer. Yeah, got quite a few girls numbers because of that. I mean, nothing came of those, but it's a proof of concept. So number four. Dress nice, but not too nice. You're just building credibility, not getting married, okay? When you dress nice, it shows intention and that you put thought into your actions. That just, you know, said the same thing twice, two different ways, okay. Plus, you don't want to stand out as the underdressed guy. You know how interviewers talk, right? Oh, what'd you think of the Yale guy? Oh, what'd you think about the programming guy? You don't want to be the underdressed guy. And guy is a gender neutral term here. Yale guy? That could be a girl. You know what I'm talking about. You can maybe get away with dressing poorly if you're extremely skilled, but even so, once you're part of the team, you represent the team to others within the company and outside the company. I can only imagine the hiring people take that into account, how you make the team look, because no team wants the lackadaisical reputation. They can be lackadaisical, but they don't want the reputation, you know? It's not about how cool the product is, it's about how cool it looks. You really think all those neon lights on your computer are improving performance? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I still wear a collared shirt when I'm on camera at work. It just makes me feel more productive. You know how you feel kind of lazy in PJs? A polo changes the whole dynamic, you know? It makes me feel like a contributing member of society. Who cares I haven't left the house in a couple weeks, you know? My shirt has a collar. <laughs> and number five, always ask a question at the end of the interview to clear up any questions you have, but most importantly, it shows interest. I'll even give you three examples of interest questions. So number one, what is the working relationship of the team? Number two, what is the day-to-day -day of your role? And number three, do you enjoy your job? Is it fulfilling? Oh, I know a two-parter on that one. This shows the interviewer that the culture of the team and company is of interest and matters to you. In today's world, genuine interest is a rare and valued commodity. Plus, it can make you the good questions guy. Yeah, again, guy is gender neutral here. Also, you gotta think about the end of the interview like the end of a first date, you know? Set up for a second date, so ask questions that do that. When should I expect to hear back? What are the next steps from here? Is there anything you need me to do in the meantime? Hmm, yeah. This shows proactiveness. You did what you needed to get done today, but how can I be ready for the future? And if you want to be ready for future videos from me, make sure you follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. And uh, let me know if there's anything you need me to do in the meantime. Baby. I'm gonna throw up. I've made myself sick.